All right, welcome Fury Motion Picture Company, episode three. So ever since I got the Alexa Mini LF, I've had several people ask me one pretty consistent question, and that is, so what lenses do you use on it? And at first, you know, I'm not sure I really understood the question or why they were asking. I mean, the obvious quick answer is any lens that has full frame coverage, right? So Aries has developed their Signature Prime series, uh, Zeiss has their Supreme Primes, Cook has their S7s, and those are all fairly new developed lenses, right, that cover uh, full format cameras. Now if you wanna go a little bit lower budget, you've got the Sigma Cine Primes, you've got lenses like the Tokina Vista Primes, um, and if you wanna go even lower budget, especially in terms of price, you've got lenses like Zines, or you know any lenses like that that were first developed for stills cameras and then later kind of rehoused and repurposed for use on cinema cameras. Now, if you're looking for full frame coverage from a zoom or from anamorphics, that's where things actually get a little tricky, right? Um, you've got Zeiss uh, compact zooms. I've actually used the Zeiss compact zoom 28 to 80 quite a bit with this camera and it works really well. Anjan has actually created a couple of fairly budget-friendly zooms with their Easy one and Easy 2 And the cool thing about them is they can be a Super 35 zoom or they can be uh, converted to cover full-frame sensors as well. Then on the higher end, you've got Fujinon with their Permista series. So if you're looking for full-frame anamorphic lenses, your options are even more limited. I mean, there are a few companies like Cook and a couple others that are bringing full-frame anamorphic to market. Uh, but your options are still pretty limited. But what I'm finding is the interesting thing about the way the anamorphic lens covers the sensor, especially since in anamorphic you're gonna be in a 2.4 aspect ratio, the Super 35 anamorphics that I've tested on the LF have actually covered the sensor pretty well. So having said all of that, really what I think the question should be is, I mean, honestly, what lenses can't you use on the camera? Now, I've actually talked to a surprising number of people who think that their Super 35 lenses are useless on a full frame camera and that all the lenses that they've grown to love or even maybe that they own um, won't work with the new full frame cameras. But honestly, there's a few options. Now, obviously, if you're going to put Super 35 lenses on a large format camera, there's gonna be some limitations and some compromises. The question then is, are those compromises and limitations acceptable for your particular project? And they might be. So one way you can use Super 35 lenses on a full frame sensor is with an expander. Now, if you don't know what that is, an expander is basically another optical element that goes between your lens and the sensor. And what it does is it takes the image circle of your lens and expands it so that it fills a bigger circle and projects a bigger image onto the sensor. Yes, science! <clears throat> now, of course, when you're using an expander, there are some compromises, uh, both in focal length and light loss. So for example, if you're using the 1.6 times expander from Tokina, there is a one-stop light loss, as well as all of your focal lengths are now gonna be 1.6 times longer. Now again, those are compromises that may or may not be crucial to your particular project. Um, I always personally got hung up on losing a stop of light. I mean, I want the shallow depth of field as I can get, right? And if I'm losing a stop of light, how am I going to get that? But then, of course, what I realized is a full frame sensor is more sensitive to light and has a shallower depth of field. So a one stop loss in light really isn't that big of a deal. Now, I don't claim to know how all the math works. I've read through discussions on how depth of field is calculated, and it depends, of course, on the two exact sensors that you're comparing and it's a long intense calculation but basically what it boils down to once you follow the equation all the way to the end is a, is the difference between a full frame sensor and super 35 sensor is about a stop and a third more or less it's science so what that means is for example if you're at a t4 on a full frame sensor you're going to get the equivalent depth of field of a 2.8 on a super 35 sensor now, of course, that's not exactly exact, but for me, it's close enough to give me a reference so I can compare the two. A few weeks ago, I needed to shoot an interview. Now, this is for a personal project, so all the budget was coming out of my own pocket. And, you know, thanks to COVID-19, uh, that meant 
I had zero budget whatsoever. In fact, if I didn't already own the camera, I probably wouldn't have done the shoot at all. So I went to the rental house to kind of see what my options were. I'm looking for something cheap, something available, something it didn't have to be the most amazing lens. I just needed to be able to put something on the camera and grab a quick interview. And what I came up with was the Sigma Cine Zooms. And that's just purely based on budget and what was available at the rental house. The Sigma Cine Primes, of course, cover full frame, like I mentioned before. But the Cine Zooms are only Super 35. So what am I supposed to do? Well, the Mini LF, as it happens, actually has a couple of different sensor modes that come in handy when you're using Super 35 glass. Now the first, I guess, obvious sensor mode is 4.5K open gate. That gives you every pixel off the sensor from side to side, top to bottom. From there, there's a 2.39 full frame mode. And that gives you the full width of the sensor it just crops off the top and bottom to give you that 2.39 aspect ratio. The next mode is where it gets interesting for Super 35 lenses. It's a 16 by 9 UHD mode. It takes a UHD crop of the 4.5K sensor in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So basically it's cropping off a little bit of the top and bottom as well as a little bit on the sides to get that 16 by 9. So from there, there are a couple other 16 by 9 modes. There's a 2K 16 by 9 and an HD 16x9. And those modes are actually just a downsample from the UHD mode. And so there's no additional cropping in on the sensor like you get on a RED when you're down resing from 8 to 7 to 6 to 5K and you're kind of cropping in, punching in on the sensor, right? So these are the 2K and HD are just a downsample from that UHD uh, initial crop from the, from the full 4.5K. So because of that, there's no change in your field of view. So one thing I wanted to mention before I go on and talk about how the different sensor modes help us when we're using Super 35 lenses is that one thing to remember about the ARRI sensor is that it is a more or less four by three aspect ratio. Not, not quite, but it's really close, which means that it's really close to a square, right? Square. And so what that means is that Think about if you're trying to draw a circle inside a square, right? And you draw the circle so that it touches all four sides, okay? So what you're left with then is just the corners that aren't covered by that circle. So to me, what that means in theory is that it should be easier to get a lens to cover that square rather than a sensor that's more rectangular like a red monstro, right? Because think if, you're, if you've got a rectangle and then you try to draw that same circle in the rectangle, once you hit the top and bottom, you've got a lot more on the sides that that circle's not covering. I don't mean that as a dig at red by any means, that's just kind of how it is. Now, of course, I'm not suggesting that you can take any Super 35 lens, throw it on the LF, and you're gonna have coverage except for in the corners. What I am saying though is don't discount the mini LF because you have your favorite lenses that you want to use, but they're only Super 35 coverage. I don't want to get bogged down in all the technical details. Literally what I did was take the Sigma Cine Zooms, put it on the camera, and run it through all the different sensor modes to see what I could get away with. So I'm going to go ahead and stop talking now so you can check out what I came up with. I just wanted to jump in and mention really quick that if you look at this lens coverage in full frame open gate, like I said, it's closer to a square. You can see in the corners that it's completely black, like there's no coverage there at all. Now, if you look at the frame lens I've put up for the 16 by nine and the two to one frame, you'll notice that even though we're not even close to getting full frame coverage on the sensor, we're actually not too far off from the 16 by nine or two to one frame, even at this lens's widest 50 millimeters. And as you increase the focal length and go tighter, coverage only gets better. In fact, all you would need to do is scale this up maybe 
5% and you'd be out of that hard vignette and have 16 by 9 coverage. So if we look at this in the 2.39 aspect ratio, you can see that there's still a significant amount of vignetting, darkening around the sides of the frame. Now that might be a cool look to your image, but if you don't like it, you can actually minimize or even totally remove the darkening on the edges with just a little bit of color correction. And at 18 millimeter, you can see there's probably not much we can do with it here. But you can see by the time we get to 24 millimeters, again, it actually wouldn't take all that much to get rid of that hard vignette in the 16 by 9 frame. Now I'm certainly not advocating that it should be standard practice to use Super 35 lenses on a large format sensor. The purpose for this test and demonstration is just to say that if all you had available to you due to budget, availability, or whatever reason, or if you just had a particular set of Super 35 lenses that you wanted to use, the Mini LF could still be an option to give you that large format look as long as you understand some of the limitations that you might run into. All right, welcome back. So not too bad, right? I mean, 16 by nine mode definitely gives you the best coverage for those Super 35 lenses. In fact, that's how I ended up shooting my interview. But like I said, with some limitations, like on focal length and, and depending on how much vignetting you feel is acceptable in your image, you can shoot those Super 35 lenses in full open gate mode. I mean, especially if you're okay with the 2.39 aspect ratio or you're willing to scale up just a tiny bit. Okay, so I, I actually wanted to put this video out a few weeks ago, but I knew I was gonna be testing a couple anamorphic options for an upcoming project, and I wanted to get that test in this video as well. So what I did was I went to my local rental house and I tested a set of Atlas Orion anamorphic lenses as well as a vintage set of Kawas. So what was interesting between these two sets of lenses is that on paper, they have almost identical image circles. But when you put them on the camera, they cover the sensor very differently. Now this is where you can clearly see and practice the difference between an image circle and a lens's illumination circle. Now keep in mind, these tests are 100% about coverage and not about looks or performance, okay? I, I didn't have the chance to test them exclusively. I wasn't able to like set up a scene or shoot an entire film with them or whatever. Uh, I was literally at the rental house, pointing it at the dude that works there and seeing, you know, what covers, where it covers the edges and what, again, what I can get away with. Okay, so obviously the Atlas Orion 40 millimeter isn't too useful shooting an open gate without an expander. You can see by the time we get to the 65 and the 100 millimeter, again, it wouldn't take much to scale up to get rid of that vignette. Now, obviously, once you put the Atlas 1.6 times expander on, we have perfect coverage. I mean, that's exactly what it's made for, right? But you do lose that extra stop of light, which really might be something to consider, especially when using the Orions, since most people I talk to say you really need to shoot them at a T4 or above to get the best performance out of them. So if you're shooting a night scene or an otherwise dark scene, that extra stop of light might just be a deal breaker. Now, once we put the camera in 16 by nine mode, we've got coverage for days. 
but you would absolutely want to set up a frame line in camera so you know just how much on each side you're going to be cutting off. This goes back to us talking about a square sensor versus a rectangular sensor. And when you're using anamorphic, that difference is compounded even more. Now, to me, the Kawas were the most interesting in terms of coverage. Now, obviously, the 40 millimeter, again, it doesn't work so well. But as soon as we put on the 50, you've got plenty of coverage on each side. Now the cool thing about the Kawa set is it comes with a 30 millimeter adapter. If you put this adapter on the 40 millimeter, it will give you a 30 millimeter field of view. So if we put it on a 50 millimeter like I did here, it's giving us a 40 millimeter field of view with, with almost full coverage. Not too much of a surprise, the 75 millimeter and the 100 millimeter cover perfectly, except for this is a super 35 lens and we're still getting perfect coverage on the sensor. All right, so hopefully that was somewhat enlightening for you. Now, I do want to say one last thing, that while shooting in 16 by nine mode certainly gives you the most coverage out of your Super 35 lenses, I mean, it's not ideal, right? I mean, you, you don't rent, you don't buy the Mini LF to shoot in 16 by nine mode, for sure. You get the LF to shoot in full 4.5K open gate, right? But what I'm saying is don't automatically discount using the LF with Super 35 glass because there are options, first of all, to make it usable and workable. Besides, the large format sensor can give even lenses that you've been using for years a distinct new look. Try them out, see how they work, see, see how they cover. And I think you'll be surprised not only about how they cover, but what an awesome, kind of interesting new look uh, the full format gives your favorite lenses. In fact, I was working with a DP just yesterday, trying his favorite lenses that he just bought that he's been using on his Alexa Mini. And I took the LF over to his place. We put the lenses on and just, just at his house, again, nothing set up, nothing lit or whatever. He was totally blown away, not just by the extra field of view that you get, on the large format camera, but just the extra, you know, the resolution and the creaminess of the look and the extra, just the new look that the full format sensor gives to his lenses absolutely just kind of blew him away. And even he was one of those who said, you know what, I never really looked at the mini LF because I just figured that my lenses wouldn't work because they're super 35. Okay, so that pretty much covers it for now. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate the likes and the subscriptions and the comments. In fact, I've said it before, if there's anything you want me to cover on this channel, please let me know in the comments. Uh, you know, I'm totally winging it as far as content goes. I'm making it up as I go along, just as I experience life with the Mini LF. Uh, hopefully, I'm, tr I'm trying to bring some useful information out there to the community. But if there's something in particular you want to know about, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll do what I can. Now, of course, if you like what I'm laying down here, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe. And if you know anyone else that might be interested or find this content useful, go ahead and give it a share. And with that, again, I appreciate you watching and hopefully we'll see you soon.